Over the centuries, the wild boar has earned somewhat of a bad reputation, or at best, a stereotyped one. But in fact, relatively little is known about the animal, despite its proximity to man. One thing we do know is that it leads a rich existence in the wild, one that's filled with surprises. The wild boar has conquered several regions. Along with the warthog and its other cousins, the wild boar belongs to the Suids family, found in a large part of Asia and in North Africa. This wild boar, or Suscrofa, inhabits all of Europe except for England, Ireland, and Denmark. They're very common in France, found anywhere from the northern regions of the country to the Camargue region, and from the Alps to the Pyrenees. The wild boar can adapt to many different kinds of territory. In the Vendée region of France, they often roam along the shores of the Atlantic. At low tide, the wild boar roots out and feeds on a variety of organisms that the ocean offers up. Another environment, the Alps. The wild boar does not get on well in deep snow. Its stumpy legs sink into the snow, making it difficult for the animal to move about. However, the wild boar is well adapted to a demanding mountain climate. The omnivorous, sturdy wild boar has colonized a wide range of habitats, from prairies to small valleys and forests. The wild boar feels secure in the shade of the undergrowth, where it finds many types of food. Inside this Carmarg reserve, the wild boars are protected, and man doesn't represent a threat. What's more, it has water to its heart's content.
Its eyesight may be very poor, but the wild boar is endowed with a powerful sense of smell, even more powerful than a dog's. This allows the wild boar to detect the presence of enemies, recognize other wild boars, and locate food. Its snout has many uses, such as burrowing. It can quickly uproot an entire corner of the prairie, digging at considerable depth. This unusual instrument also governs its sense of touch and allows the boar to root out foodstuffs. Wild boar packs are made up of the mother, her offspring, and young males under the age of one. The sow is experienced and leads the group. The others follow, imitating her every movement and gesture. The adult males are loners. The wild boar is highly skilled in hiding among the brush and bracken. When the wild boar is on its own turf, mimicry is a highly efficient means of protection. On human turf, however, speed is much more important. The wild boar loves to eat, especially new corn. It will even go as far as risking its life just to savor this tasty dish. The local farmers don't exactly appreciate the wild boar's good taste, however, given the extent of the damage when the animal replenishes its fat reserves in autumn. Throughout history, the wild boar has been a recurring symbol in myths and legends, as a beast that man must conquer. The Gauls loved to hunt wild boar, which they revered for its courage and its willfulness, not to mention its flavor. The Romans even feasted on wild boar at their banquets. 
More recently, the beast was the preferred prey of French kings, and wild boar hunts have now become a popular sport for the common man. These days, each region in France has its own set of traditions, which are often influenced by the nature of its hunting terrain. This type of hunting is a very common practice. Some loners prefer what is called the silent hunt. The most common method includes hunting with hounds, which involves a driving of game towards the guns by beaters. The wild boar is the most intelligent of game animals and is the unrivaled champion of self-defense. But their numbers are on the rise and the wild boar is becoming a more frequent target of man. In France, 37,000 were killed in 1973, 150,000 in 1992. When a wild boar is wounded, it sometimes wanders away from the spot where it was injured to die, only to fall prey to foxes and vultures, among other wild predators. When the wild boar wants to rest, it curls up inside a lair, which the animal has built up for itself well out of sight. Weather conditions, peace and quiet, and the wild boar's potential for an easy escape are all factors when it chooses a lair. The wild boar spends most of its waking hours searching for food, except when it enters the rutting and nursing period. In 
general, the forest supplies the wild boar with an abundance of food to satisfy its hearty appetite. But there are also times when food is scarce. In optimal conditions, the wild boar's diet consists primarily of acorns, beech nuts, and chestnuts. It is also fond of fruit. When conditions are poor, it resorts to bulbs, rhizomes, and roots. The wild boar's diet also includes worms, larvae, insects, and small rodents as vital sources of protein. Wild boars know how to make the most out of what they find. These skilled laborers have a natural sense of how to balance their resources. In extreme circumstances, wild boars may attack animals that are larger than they are. Ponds with low water levels provide an excellent opportunity for the wild boar to demonstrate its fishing skills, especially when it comes to carp. The wild boar quickly becomes a predator when it finds a weakened prey. A rabbit which has contracted myxomatosis is the perfect opportunity for the wild boar to have a quick meal. The wild boar eats dead fish as well. Eels from the Camargue region provide a delectable meal. A wild boar will indeed eat almost anything, but it can have its weaknesses, especially this particular kind of grape. Berries 
which the wild boar plucks from blackberry bushes, are another favorite given their tangy burst. Whatever the season, the easygoing but resourceful wild boar always manages to satisfy its appetite. But the wild boar's life can be much more violent, particularly during the rutting season, when the males fight over females. Wild boars spend a great deal of time in play, up until the age of eight to nine months old. This is excellent training for the violent battles to come. Mating season doesn't begin until December or January, after that of the stags. Depending on the abundance of food, however, the wild boar's reproductive cycle can extend throughout the year. The beginning of autumn is the belling season. This is the occasion for the stags to define and mark their territory. Then, the fighting will determine who wins the doe's attention. To attract the males, the sows mark the surroundings with saliva and secretions. The solitary male reacts to these signals. During the fighting that ensues, the females drive the young males away from the group. The sow is receptive for mating for only two days.
Both wild and tame quadrupeds coexist peacefully, if not indifferently. As winter comes, food is more and more scarce, and wild boars will travel for miles in search of it. Wild boars shed from May through summer, the season during which they have a light coat of hair. Their warm coat grows back during the fall. The thick hair keeps the wild boar warm during the cold months. During the winter, the female undergoes a four-month gestation period before giving birth. <coughs> Before they get ready to give birth, the future mothers leave the family group to build a shelter made out of leaves and branches and to find necessary solitude. Four to six offspring make up a litter, each weighing between one to two pounds. Wild boars, hairy and mobile at birth, head immediately to the teeth. Each baby has claimed its own within a few days. Wild boars are initially incapable of regulating their body temperature and huddle together or against their mother, who patiently lies there protecting and nursing them. Very quickly, young wild boars become less vulnerable and more independent. They begin playing outside their shelter, discovering the first lessons of life under their mother's watchful eye. Thank you. 
After about 10 days, the sows return to the group and raise their offspring together. At night, many creatures are busy at work. Wild boars semi-nocturnal hunt for food. The tawny owl watches them pass before bringing back a meal to her young. boars are growing. They discover the joys of playing in mud and taste different types of food. The nursing, brief but frequent, occurs at regular intervals throughout the day over a period of about 10 weeks. Following their mother's example, the young wild boars now taste the different types of food that make up their diet and learn to nose around for insects and roots. They are now aware of danger and react to the slightest sound, either by lying flat on the ground to hide or running away. Suckling, taking place at fewer and fewer intervals, remains a comforting and relaxing way of satisfying their appetite.
the young wild boars learn to love mud baths, which provide them an excellent opportunity for play. Then, they rub against trees to get rid of the mud and parasites. The mother remains vigilant, but the young wild boars, always on the lookout, now sleep less peacefully. Springtime. The forest awakens. A black woodpecker watches over its nest. The sows have returned to group. The babies prefer to suckle their mother, but will go to another sow when convenient. Thus, an orphaned litter could be quickly adopted by the rest of the group. The young wild boars now learn to live within the community. Their striped coats will gradually become uniform in color, and by the age of four to five months, they have a red coat of hair. They will not have a black coat like their parents until they are one year old. Thank <laughs> you. 
green woodpeckers, buzzards, deer. All of the wild boar's neighbors are active in the springtime. For this season's litter, spring means discovering the months of prosperity. To avoid the damage wild boars can cause to crops, some forest wardens have installed feeding points. These also help to maintain a wild boar population on a given territory, and the stags are quick to take advantage of this. The wild boars don't particularly appreciate the presence of stags near their feeding places. They are fond of their antlers, which supply them with calcium and other nutrients. The remains of a dead fawn are a source of protein for wild boars, who become scavengers on such occasions. Wild boars are often misunderstood and persecuted, but their role in nature should not be taken for granted. These resourceful, clever animals play an important part in helping man to understand the world of nature. Mm -hmm.